And now, let's welcome our first presenter of the second session, Mr. Kenton Xavier Chance. Thank you very much, Edwin, one of the few people who know what that X actually stands for. Director Leo and the faculty and staff of the Graduate School of International Affairs, fellow students, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, please allow me to say a special thank you to Professor Chen Wei Hua, who agreed to be my advisor um, when I was halfway through my thesis because my previous advisor, Professor Dr. Stein, had to leave. Also, um, thank you very much, Professor Chen, the female Professor Chen this time, for um, the comments <laughs> that you would give later on. Um, today my presentation is on media liberalization and democracy, and I'm looking at the case of radio broadcasting in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And my research project, my thesis, is investigates the extent to which the liberalization of the radio industry in the Caribbean nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has impacted on citizens' understanding of partisan political realities. It also explores the degree to which the people of St. Vincent and the Grandins, recalled Vincentians, have access to different views via radio. Additionally, this thesis analyzes the extent to which Vincentians have been empowered through the information that radio disseminates to make informed choices as they relate to governance and everyday issues that affect them. Further, the project analyzes how differences in radio ownership, vision, mission, and political sympathies have translated into polysemic encoding and dissemination of current affairs information, negotiating the extent to which changes in radio access and choices have impacted on the public sphere in St. Vincent and Grandines, accounting for social, cultural, sociopolitical, and economic realities. In terms of my presentation, I'm going to discuss a little bit about media and democracy, radio as a medium, the theoretical framework of my research, my research purpose, my research question, methodology, the limitations of my research, and the findings thereof. Essentially, the relationship between media and democracy can be described as a marriage. And one of the most famous comments we have in that regard came over 200 years ago when Thomas Jefferson, one of the founder fathers of the United States, wrote in a January 7, 1787 letter, that the basis of our government being the opinion of the people, the very first object should be to keep that right. And were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer newspapers without government. Of course, originally he said the latter, but as a good journalism student, I don't want you to remember which is the latter, so I change it to newspaper without government. But unlike some human relationships, the marriage between media and democracy in theory, might I add, is most fruitful when it is polygamous. I know that many, many societies do not approve of polygamous relationships, but in the case of democracy and media, that is often better. And John Keane, and uh, his research is pretty old, but his findings are still relevant today. In 1991, he wrote that democracy requires informed citizens their capacity to produce intelligent agreements by democratic means can be nurtured only when they enjoy equal and open access to diverse sources of information. So what? Why is this important? What does all of what I just say, said have to do with my research? Before 1997, in St. Vincent and the Grenades, we had a situation where there was one radio station. And that sole radio station was owned by the state. It was owned by the government. Now, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have 11 radio stations in a population of 100 and, uh, about 107,000 people. And only one of those radio stations is owned by the state. Why the focus on radio? Radio has traditionally been an important medium in the Caribbean, including in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And if you were to read my paper, then you would I, I have um, adequately f fleshed that out there, I think. Compared to other medium, radio is cheap and it caters to even the least educated of a population. For instance, if I were to print a newspaper or a flyer, you have to have a certain level of literacy to read what is on that flyer. But if, you, if you're not hearing impa impaired and you understand the language of a broadcast, then you immediately become a potential member of a radio audience. And that's, why I, that's what I mean when I say it is cheap and it caters to the, more, the, the least educated of a population. 
and radio has been used uh, throughout its history to great effect. And some of the greatest examples of that are in Nazi Germany and um, in Rwanda. Of course, we can moralize about the ways in which it was used, but I'm not so concerned about the morality of the use of the medium. I'm just concerned about its effectiveness. And what do the theorists have to say about radio and about this research? Well, I'm, I'm focusing on liberal pluralism, and which says that a multiplicity of owners, when you have more than one persons or entities owning media, it would lead to a greater variety of media content and less state influence and control, which is vitally important for democracies to flourish. Competition among the media owners should lead to more choice and improved quality media content. The purpose of my research, in light of what I had just, the, the background that I outlined, is to contrast the realities of liberalized radio in St. Vincent and the Grenadines with what theories of media liberalization predict would happen when there is a combination of several specific variables, mm -hmm. namely plurality of ownership and diversity of content. I have four research questions. The first is, to what extent do the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines have access to different views via radio, and how has this resulted in changes in citizens' understanding of their partisan political realities? To what extent do Vincentians feel that they have been empowered through the information that radio provides to make more informed choices relating to governance and everyday issues that affect them. Question three, to what extent have oral tradition in St. Vincent and the Grandines, the proliferation of calling radio programs, the high incidence of cellular phones, and increasingly competitive telecommunications rate facilitated the movement of information into the public sphere? And finally, to what extent have differences in ownership, vision, mission, and political sympathies translated into a variety in the coding of information disseminated, as well as more choice for listeners? My um, methodology, it uses um, unstructured, unstruct in-depth interviews. And why did I use it? Because it's a flexible way of gaining information. It allows the, re the researcher to develop rapport with the interviewee, and therefore the the respondent is likely to respond in more details to questions that might be quote unquote sensitive. And also, I um, used purposive sampling. The limitations of my research, among the limitations of my research, I should say, there is a concentrated focus on the situation as it obtains in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, even as the study is contextualized within the Caribbean region. Therefore, to the extent that it is concentrated and is focused on this particular locale, it is not necessarily generalizable to other countries. Although, if the same procedures were to be followed, there is a strong possibility that the research can yield similar results. And my study does not aim to provide an informed understanding of the overall impact of media in, in SVT on democracy in the country but rather it seeks to understand the impact that liberalized radio has had on democracy. And my major finding is that radio has created avenues for the dissemination of more information packaged in a variety of ways to various publics within St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The role of liberalized media in a democracy relates to allowing citizens to choose from among seven political options based on quality and timely information. Hence, the liberalization of radio has helped to make the country more democratic. However, several factors continue to hinder the medium from making its fullest contribution to making the country as democratic as it can be in the circumstances. And if you were to go to my paper, you would see that I have outlined and discussed in details what those factors are. That is essentially what I want to say to you. Thank you very much for your time.